Listening to the She's About Business show may result in motivation, inspiration, and an overall uplifted mood. If you are someone who does not enjoy being motivated, inspired, or uplifted, please do not listen to this show. This show is dedicated to helping listeners move forward exponentially on their journey to living their very best lives. We cannot be held responsible for the awesomeness that may result. Then again, maybe we can. Hey, Kaden. Yes, Mommy. It's time for the She's About Business show. Yes. <laughs> You know, God knew who he was creating when he created me, and the same is true for you. We must persevere. Now, faith, to me, is the most vital part of our strengthening process. We must believe in the process. We must believe in our ability to complete the process, and we must believe in the one who orchestrates the process. I hate to break it to you, but we're all called to help and inspire someone. If you have children, guess what? They're watching you. If you have family members or friends, guess what? They're watching you. (laughs) And they are either going to be inspired to fail or succeed. Hey there, this is Diathea Garns, the Impact Coach, and you are listening to the She's About Business show where we are impacting lives and inspiring change. Let's get started with the show. Hey there, it's your host, Diethea Garns. Happy Father's Day to all the great dads out there. If you know a great dad, please give him a some love today and notice that the key word is great <laughs> just like giving birth doesn't make you a mother producing a baby does not make you the father of a child but there are some amazing fathers out there who are sacrificing just as much as we mothers do and we definitely want to honor them today. So again, happy Father's Day to all the amazing dads out there who are doing a great job to impact the life of their children, positively impact the lives of their children. Okay. Happy Father's Day to you guys. Wow. This has been a long week. (laughs) My little one who turned seven last week announced to me that every day is now going to be his birthday. (laughs) I guess that means that I did a good job of giving him a very happy birthday. So that's a good thing. But yeah, we're still trying to work that that situation out. I actually considered taking this week off because this has just been a very busy period have a lot going on with the business you know it's like the end of the school year we have a lot of birthdays actually tomorrow is my birthday (laughs) and I never really celebrate my birthday like that like I probably should but I feel like you know I'm always working because my motto is that I'll work while other people play so that I can play longer and stronger, you know? (laughs) So I don't know. I'm going to try to do a little something this year, but needless to say, I didn't take off from the show this week, but I also didn't fully prepare for the show this week. So please excuse me if I'm not, you know, the most prepared today because I literally got the inspiration for today's show in the middle of the night after waking up out of a deep sleep. So I hope I can pull it off. But those are actually my favorite show topics because I honestly believe that those are the ones that are most inspired by the Holy Spirit. And those are the ones that I really, really, really love because in order for me to prepare for them, I have to pray. I have to really try to focus in and I have to actually study. So hopefully. This will be a great show for both you guys and for me, too. I hope you've had a chance to go and visit the impactcoach.net 
to see all of the cool things that I have going on. Like I mentioned last week, I will be starting some new group coaching programs. Yay. Very soon those will be available. So please stay on the lookout for those and some more cool things that I have coming up to better connect with you guys, serve you, and also help you on the path of living your very best life, which of course, as you know, is so, so, so very important to me. And this is episode three of season two of the award-winning She's About Business show, aka The Fab Show, giving all honor and glory to God for everything he is doing. And of course, to my Savior, Jesus Christ, thanks to you, all of my fabulous sisters and fabulous fellas for tuning in and for supporting the show and getting us to our second season. You guys have been so super supportive on the various platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, Podomatic, TuneIn, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Luminary, and of course, YouTube. And don't forget to give me and the show a shout out on our new and improved Instagram account. You can follow me at She's About Business and mention She's About Business in your shout out so I can shout you out right back, okay? So today's topic is, drum roll please, (laughs) this long awaited topic that I did not prepare for is overcoming people PTSD. Let me say that again. Overcoming people PTSD. Now, again, I woke up in the middle of the night with this topic on my brain. So this is not something that I sat around and thought about after the fact. You know, when I woke up and I got up and I began thinking about it and studying you know, in the little bit of time that I had to prepare for this topic, I realized that dealing with people and relationships can be so traumatic. And we often ignore the fact that it is very possible to have people PTSD. Now, this is not an official medical term, as far as I know. (laughs) I've never heard it before. So it's something that I just, you know, came up with or whatever, wherever it came from. Even though it's not an official medical term, I do believe that we need to be more aware of how traumatic relationships truly, truly, truly affect our lives and affect who we are. Now, one of the most well-known, I guess you could say, ways that we relate to or are aware of PTSD is with our people who serve in the military. So again, you guys know I've always been so supportive of them. I'm so appreciative of everything that they give and sacrifice so that we can remain over here and remain safe while they are putting their lives on the line, while they're giving up so much, they're sacrificing they um, give up a lot of times their men- their mental health and their mental well-being so that we can be safe and remain free. So I just want to make sure that I'm very clear to say that I'm never, ever, ever going to discredit or downplay what they go through and the PTSD that many, many, many of them suffer from. Um, So what I'm talking about is something different. It's something that, you know, we go through on a day to day basis and it can be very long term. And so, you know, sometimes because of the long term effects, you know, it can be quite devastating. So recently. I was watching a show and I heard the term gaslight and actually I was watching a clip of the show I don't really watch much tv anymore I don't have time but I do like to watch you know various news clips and things like that and so I heard this term gaslighting and I'm like wow this has been happening to me my whole life (laughs) 
how is it possible that I've been gaslighted my whole life and didn't even know that it was a thing, right? Or that it was a term for it. I knew after I woke up that it was a thing, but I didn't know that it actually had a label. So what exactly is gaslighting? It's basically manipulating someone by psychological means into questioning their own sanity. That's the uh, the official definition for gaslighting or gaslight. How many of you have experienced a relationship where somebody has done that to you? Maybe you've spoken up about something. Maybe you've said, hey, listen, like something isn't right here. You know, I'm starting to question your motives. I'm starting to question your loyalty. You know, um, something just isn't right. Or maybe you've stood up for yourself in even a more, you know, stern way, assertive way. And they've come back and made you end up feeling like you were crazy. You were tripping. um, You were wrong. You were to blame. Right. And they basically manipulate you into staying in the relationship or staying in the business situation. Um, And they make you begin to question who you are, whether or not, you know, you're to blame. And I, I honestly believe that this can actually start from childhood. You know, a lot of the adults who are given the responsibility of caring for children, to be honest, in my opinion, and from what I've witnessed in my work, may not always be the most suited for that. But we're not questioning why God makes people parents, right? I believe that he knows what he's doing at all times, and everything that we go through makes us who we are and hopefully will make us stronger. But I do believe that This type of manipulation can start in our childhood for some people. A lot of people who go through abuse suffer from this. They are manipulated by their abusers to begin to think that they are the ones who are crazy, right? So I wanted to just talk about this today because in my work with people as a counselor And as a life coach and as a minister, I see so many people who are actually suffering from long term trauma of dealing with people. I mean, I I, I try to think of, of various ways that I could say this to make it sound nicer, Um, because, you know, make no mistake about it. I have been called by God, I believe, to work with people and to love people, right? And to serve people and to help people. So I have to have a certain amount of love and empathy and things like that for people. So when it comes to talking about a topic like this that makes you maybe question people, sometimes, you know, it's kind of hard for me to justify exactly, um, you know, the topic and also to figure out a, a balanced way to do that. So, again, I love people, but people can be one of the biggest sources of our trauma. It's just the truth. And until we realize that and recognize it, then we can't deal with it. Right. Until we actually say, hey, listen, maybe just maybe I'm going through some of this stuff. So what I wanted to do today is I just wanted to talk about some of the signs. Right. Of this type of people, PTSD, you know, we've heard of the signs of the more traditional PTSD that, you know, we I was talking about when I spoke about some of the people who have served in the military, you know, things like a more depressed mood, a feeling of um, sadness and hopelessness and basically just questioning the point of life. And I can imagine after going through some of the things that they have gone through, um, You know, you can imagine how it'll be pretty easy to feel depressed and sad and hopeless and questioning, you know, what's the meaning of everything that I've been through. But the 
symptoms of people PTSD are a little bit different. And again, as I have, you know, lived my life and I've had my own experiences and I've, you know, talked with my friends about their experiences and I've worked with clients, some of these things that I'm going to be talking about that are symptoms of people PTSD, we just chalk up to be just life, right? Just kind of who I am, not realizing that these things are the result of, you know, the things that we've gone through. And I think that it's so important that we can actually realize that so that we can deal with it. Now, I do want to I want to try to always incorporate scriptures going forward because I want you to always have a scriptural basis for the stuff that we talk about. So I'm going to look at Romans 12 and 21 that says, do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So regardless of what we talk about today and we think about what people have done to you and the manipulation and things like that, and also even the fact that some of us may have been responsible for gaslighting other people, right? Always remember that we shouldn't feel overcome by the bad things that have happened to us, right? But we can overcome evil with good. We can overcome evil through prayer and healing and and just really going to God for our strength. So I just want to make sure that I point that out. But nevertheless, knowledge is power. So we still want to be aware. So one of the first symptoms of people PTSD is finding yourself in circles of repetitive patterns, right? Where you basically keep getting in the same types of relationships. You keep getting into the same types of business situations or partnerships. You keep getting into the same types of job situations and you find yourself with the same type of situation happening with a different employer, with different coworkers, right? And you know, that saying that people always say, well, hey, you're the only thing that everybody has in common, so it must be something wrong with you. Now, people say that as sort of a jab, right? To make you, you know, I, I'm not gonna necessarily to make you say to make you feel bad, but to make you look at yourself, I guess. Now, that's part true because I do think that we have to look at ourselves, but I think that this people PTSD is more of the reason that we continually get into these repetitive cycles as opposed to it being just something that we're doing or we have a bad attitude or something wrong with us, right? If you continue to get into the same type of situation, it's almost as if you feel feel like it's familiar. That's all you deserve, right? And that's that could be because of a false idea that you've learned from the previous traumatic event that you went through. So you're going to naturally seek out something else that you feel is going to fit you. And this can happen in friendships, with family relationships, right? And even though you may feel uncomfortable in the situation, it makes you feel bad about yourself. It decreases your sense of self-worth. You just keep finding yourself in those same types of situations. Because honestly, sometimes. Even in our discomfort, we can be comforted because we're used to it. Or a lot of women that I know continually find themselves in relationships with men who need help, right? Maybe somewhere along the way, they were put in a position as a child where they had to help. And and that was the role that they played that was, you know, got them the most love or got them the most attention. So with men, they automatically look for men who need help. And so they help these men, they pull them up, they help shape them. And then once the men become more successful, they leave them behind and move on to somebody else. 
The second thing that I believe is a symptom of people PTSD is that you can blow things out of proportion that to other people are small things, but to you is a big deal. It's a big deal to you because you felt it before, right? And that trauma, that ugh, that negative feeling can make you very hypocritical, you know, and not even hypocritical because a lot of times it's something that you wouldn't do to someone else. So I shouldn't say hypocritical. I should say hypercritical, like you're super sensitive to that thing because you felt the pain of it before. And even, you know, somebody can tell you, like, I think you're blowing this out of proportion. Like, I really didn't mean it that way. You know, your trauma has created anxiety and insecurity and, you know, this tendency in you to not want to repeat that feeling. So you're going to overreact when you feel it again. Oh my gosh, I'm talking to myself today. I'm telling you. The third thing is you are super, super protective of yourself and the people you love, to be honest. When you've been hurt, you know, so deeply and so badly that it qualifies as being traumatic emotionally. And I think so many of us have experienced that. A lot of times isolating yourself feels like the only way to prevent that from happening again. It feels like the best way to protect yourself. Right. Because you never know who you can trust. Another thing, too, is that you are very protective about your personal information. Like, so even if you meet someone and you're like, OK, you know, she's kind of cool. You know, he's kind of cool. You really are reluctant to be honest and you hide things about yourself. Right. It's like the person really, really, really has to prove themselves before you honestly open up. Does this sound like you guys out there or anyone out there? (laughs) Like I said, I know I'm definitely talking to myself. So the fourth thing, and and I see this all the time, is trying to self-medicate. Now, when I say self-medicate, it doesn't necessarily have to be through drugs or alcohol, right? But you can also try to fix the problem by eating. That's that's also a way of self-medicating. Of course, drugs and alcohol is also a form of that. But there's also other things. So eating, working excessively. Hmm, could be talking to myself again. <laughs> um, you know, people just, you know, have hobbies that they get really, really, really obsessed with. Um, And that's all they do. A lot of people like that are really, really self-medicating. And it could be actually a good hobby, you know, nothing that's hurting them. It could be, you know, getting into arts and crafts or working out at the gym or, you know, taking um, classes or, you know, it could be some very positive things. But what they're actually doing is they're trying to occupy their mind and even occupy themselves physically to the extent where they can, you know, um, just try to take matters into their own hands and fix the problem or self-medicate to the point where they don't actually think about what they're actually feeling. Does that make sense? The next one, number five, I believe, I think it's number five. Again, I didn't prepare. I'm literally counting these things on my hands here. <laughs> um, and, and you know, the, the, the cool thing about this is, like I said, when my topics, which I, I, I honestly believe all of them come from God, he just gives them to me in different ways. But when I get the ones like this, 
most usually it's not too hard for me to prepare because it's, it's talking to me. Right. So a lot of times he's actually trying to teach me something and, you know, at the same time, allowing me to teach other people. But number five is you actually allow yourself to settle. So you may have all of these. You may have some of these. And and to be honest, even though some of them kind of work against each other, you can do all of them at the same time. So, again, we talked about you, you know, being overprotective of yourself and isolating. But then at the same time, you can do that with some people, you know, because they don't really hit that button with you. They don't grab your attention in this in that particular way. But then you can meet somebody else and they trigger something and you're like, oh, my gosh, I think I'm going to let this person in. And then you could allow that person in. And then you can begin to settle for things that you shouldn't settle for. And you're doing that because you've gone through so many things and so many hurts that you feel like you just need to accept less than what you deserve. And it's like, you know what? No matter what, I'm going to make this work because I cannot go through another breakup. I cannot go through another rejection. So I'm just going to settle for because I cannot deal with it. If this thing does not work out. Does that make sense? Oh, my goodness. And the thing about all of these symptoms, like I said, they can happen just. Um. In a regular relationship where there's no trauma. But I think when you are suffering from people PTSD and I'm using a little quotations with my fingers. <laughs> they are overly. Um, overly. What's the word that I'm looking for? They're exaggerated. Does that make sense? These feelings are exaggerated. They actually happen at a level where you actually can notice, right? Okay, this this isn't right. Like this is happening to me too much. The thing that I guess I really want to bring home today is that these things are not normal. You don't have to live like this. You don't have to experience things like this within your relationship. My prayer is that all of us, would be able to have relationships where we don't have to settle, right? And have relationships where we don't have to try to isolate ourselves or to self-medicate or preoccupy our minds to be able to ignore what's actually going on. You know, and we don't have to worry about blowing things out of proportion, you know, and we don't find ourselves in these repeating cycles. Of, of bad relationships or similar circumstances, right? And also the prayer is that the people who come into our lives will love us enough to help us work through our issues just as we are helping them work through theirs. That's what it's all about. This whole thing about relationships, it's a give and a take, regardless of what type of relationship it is, business partnership, family, employee, employer, all of it is give and take. And you have to value yourself enough to realize that if someone is not willing to put in the work for you, that you're willing to put in for them. If they don't value you as much as you value them, if they are willing to walk away from you, but you continue to fight for them, then you need to love yourself and value yourself enough to let it go. And guess what? I say this today. It does not matter who it is. I'm sorry. No one, no one is worth my peace. No one is worth my purpose because going through people PTSD over and over and over again will absolutely derail you from your purpose. It's that serious. 
it is that serious. And today I'm going to close out this episode with another scripture because I just want to really encourage you guys. This is a topic that I could go on and on about because it happens to us every single day. It absolutely does. And I'm going to ask you guys today to share this episode because I really want people to be aware that they are going through this and they could be suffering and they they may need to go and talk to someone. They may need to really um, take some efforts to heal themselves, you know, through, you know, prayer, through, you know, just talking things out with God, because I absolutely know that that works because I've done it or whatever works for them. They absolutely need to be aware that this could be happening. But I just want to encourage you guys um, with Second Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, which says, praise to the God of all comfort. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So basically, we receive comfort from God, we go to Him, and then that strengthens us to be able to comfort other people, which is exactly what I'm doing right now, right? So I absolutely hope that this episode has been um, effective in doing that, my fabulous ones, all right? That is the end of the show for this week. Uh, Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Thank you for bearing with me through, you know, just kind of going off the fly as I'm learning to do that more and more. And I hope you guys like that. But I really hope that, um, you know, this episode will help you deal with, avoid and recover from trauma that has been caused to you by other people. I hope that you will be able to avoid any future trauma. And I pray for nothing but blessed relationships for you in the future. I pray that you will not be inflicting any trauma on other people as well, because, you know, we are all capable of also doing that. No gaslighting. okay? (laughs) And guys, thanks so much again for all the support. And don't forget that it's so very important to me and to the show that you leave a rating or review on the platform of your choice so that. The show can continue to make an impact and win some more awards. Yay. I so appreciate all of you who have taken the time to leave a review or to give me feedback or to share the show. If you're listening on iTunes, Google Podcasts, TuneIn or Spotify, Podbean, Podomatic, Luminary or any of the other platforms and you haven't already, please review and share the show. If you're listening on YouTube on the She's About Business channel, please subscribe, share and like. And don't forget that I have amazing content on Binge Networks that you can't find anywhere else. So check it out and sign up there. Also, I forgot to mention that I am going to be launching a new show very soon. It's actually going to be um, a Roku channel show uh, called She's Making an Impact. So look out for that and be, um, you know, just be aware that that's going to be coming up soon. I'll give you more information in the future upcoming weeks. And also don't forget that if you are an Instagram user, please make a comment with a mention and let me know your thoughts on the show. And until next time, let's work at being about the business of living our very best lives by overcoming people, PTSD, and not causing that same trauma to other people, being more mindful of how we treat others, right? And remember that we are on this journey together. I love you guys. Mwah. The She's About Business Show is directed and hosted by Daikia Garns, digital editing by Will Rice at Pro Voice Guy Studios, and copyright by She's About Business Inc. Thanks so much for listening to the She's About Business Show. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Also, if you think I'm doing a great job or you enjoy an episode, leave a review, rating, or comment. I love to hear from you. And don't forget to visit She'sAboutBusiness.com for amazing blog articles, events, and services. Love you guys. Let's be about business.